Well, John, I, I know how excited you were when this fight got officially announced and put together. I guess now that we're just a couple days out from you getting back into the octagon, what is the feel like for you right now? Oh, man, it feels awesome. I'm just so grateful to be here. I'm glad to be home. Um, the, the promotion is just so different than it used to be. It's just like, it's really stepped up a notch, man. Um, it's awesome. It's, it's just really great. I'm soaking it all up. I'm trying my best to just enjoy the whole process and just have as much fun with it all as I can. But. I know, I know that you know you were kind of looking for like that that healthy fear, like a little bit of nerves that maybe weren't there. I wondered if they were there, and then I know she got up there at media day, and you're worried most about the chapstick and how it's looking on your face. So I'm guessing maybe not too much nerves going on right now. But ahead of this fight, you know, heavyweight in the debut, like is that healthy fear back a little bit? What, what is it? What like that help that that nerves? You know, some oh, of that, that edge back. that was kind of missing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know. If, I don't know if it's fear. You know, um, one of my favorite quotes. Uh, you know, is, God hasn't given me the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Um, so I can't say that I'm afraid. I mean, there's some nervousness. You know, doing media makes you feel a little nervous. You know, you just want to put your best foot forward. Um, you know, seeing the fans again. Being the kind of center of attention again, dude. I've, I'm from Albuquerque, and I live a pretty simple lifestyle, you know, shooting guns, hanging out with my dog, you know, taking care of my family. It's just like I'm just a low key guy. So this is like, it's a nice, it's a nice reality check being out here in front of everyone again, and and uh, I'm just doing my best with it and trying to have fun with it, and like share it. share some light and love, and just enjoy the process. You know, for all of us on the outside, like our big questions are right. It's like. How's John's body going to hold up at heavyweight? You know, will he still have the speed and the movement? Will he, you know, will the strength hold up? Can the cardio go five rounds? I mean, you've been the one preparing, and do you know the answers to all those questions, or do you even you not know how it is once you get in the actual octagon? I believe I know the answers to these questions. I feel, I feel awesome. I feel awesome. I feel like I move really well. I have great pride in my endurance. I do a lot of endurance training, whether I'm on a row machine or in the pool or on the bike or sparring or heavy mitts, jiu-jitsu, jogging. Uh, I work really hard. I feel great. Honestly, I feel, I feel like a stronger version of myself. You know, I'm not super lean. I don't have a mean six-pack like I used to. Um, that took me a while to get used to, you know what I mean? Like, back in the day, I would judge, like, my fitness level by the way I looked in the mirror. You know, I'm a, I'm a heavyweight now. That's why my teammates said, John, you're a heavyweight now. And, 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 uh, and it's not about what you look like. It's about how you perform. And I feel like I'm performing really well. You know, I've, I've, I've had some close knockouts this camp, knocking out other people. That's something that never happened in camp in the past. Um, when I decide I want to get guys down to the ground, they go down. I have a pretty much a 100% takedown rate in my training right now, and um, I feel really good. I like it. Get to eat what I want, <coughs> feel good, you know what I'm saying? Life is good. Nice. And last question for me. I mean, obviously, you spent a lot of time fighting the absolute best in the world, right? So I'm just curious, as you break down Cyril, where does he rank on that scale of best in the world? Like, is he up there as one of the toughest challenges you've ever had, or maybe not? It, you know, it's, it's hard to say. It's hard to say whether it would be the toughest challenge or not. You know, I, I can't predict the future. You know, my, my first Gulf Shison fight, I wasn't, I wasn't expecting him to put on the fight he did, and it was an absolute war. Uh, I am ready for whatever. I'm ready to dominate. But if I don't dominate and, and the fight goes five rounds, I'm ready to press forward. And I'm ready for a dog fight. I'm ready to bleed and sweat and leave my heart out there. Uh, I'm ready for however it goes. I feel pretty prepared for victory. John, over here. You just mentioned about being prepared to bleed and stuff like that. I know you're a technician at this sport, but you're also someone who can go in there with bad intentions. You want to go in there and prove that you can beat this guy up. Cyril talks about this as a sport, as an athletic competition. Do you think when it comes down to it, he just doesn't have some bad intentions in him like you can take in there? Well, I, I believe that, you know, if, if I go out there and stand in front of him and, and let him get into his rhythm, then I'm sure he would have bad intentions. I won't be lulled to sleep by him of like, oh, you know, I'm just happy to be here. It's just the sport. And, you know, life goes on if I win or lose. You know, I feel like I fight from something a little bit different. You know, there's, there's, there's a dog inside of me. It was interesting because during the countdown, his coach was like, you know, 
For the Tai Tu Tavasa fight, we, we focused on bringing out Cyril's dog. And I don't feel like that's something your coach has to, should have to like teach you about being a dog. Either you have it or you don't. And uh, I know that I'm a dog at the end of the day. I have, that, I have a dog in me, I have a lion in me, I have, I have a, a, a vicious warrior inside of me. It's who I am. And uh, losing is not an option. This is not just a sporting event to me. This is, this is my life. This is my image. This is my legacy. Um, this is me. And um, my reasons why are really big, you know. My reasons why are really big. And I, I don't know if his energy matches mine when it comes to the seriousness of how I take this, this fight in this game. A lot of people are talking about, oh, wrestling versus striking and stuff like that. But in terms of big fight experience, you've done this, right? He's yes, had, sir. He's had one or two big fights. I'm right, France is a big fight. But do you think there's a chance as he's walking to that cage on Saturday, the moment just starts to build and build and get to him, whereas it just won't for you? You know, I, I could see him staying composed uh, in the moment. Uh, he fought Taitu Tavasa in front of his home country. I'm, I'm sure that was a massive moment for him. Um, but I'm not tied to Tavasa. I look nothing like him. I, I don't perform like him. I'm not Derek Lewis. I'm not Francis Nugano. I'm a much, much different athlete. I'm by far the most versatile athlete he's ever faced. I'm the most experienced athlete he's ever faced. And whether he realizes it in the cage, uh, while walking to the cage or not, he will realize it by maybe by round two or round one. He'll, he'll realize it. He'll realize it. And last one from me. When you spoke to John Morgan, you said that you can guarantee the fans this fight and a Stipe fight. Is that possibly the last time we'll see you? If you beat Stipe, are you content with walking away? Or do you have an interest in fighting these younger up-and-comers once again, but this time at a different division? Uh, I, you know, really, I can't predict the future. You know, I, I speak very confidently. I have a lot of belief. I have a lot of faith. But I can't predict the future. Um, like I said, this, this fight could be an absolute war. Or it could be like, wow, he just blew through game. You know, I don't know how it's going to look. Uh, I think I'm going to base it on how I'm performing, you know, how I'm feeling. I'm just going to take, take it one fight at a time. And um, my, my goals, my goals for myself personally is, is to make this look easy and to fight at least two times this year, at least. And then we'll take it, we'll just take it from there. John, over here. Uh, we spoke with Anthony Smith earlier this week, and he said, if you had fought Francis, he would probably predict you to go 50-45 over Francis, and he feels Cyril is just the tougher like mixed martial arts fight. So given how much tape you do watch leading up to your fights, do you agree that Cyril would just be a tougher all-around fight than Francis? I feel like Cyril is the most incomplete fighter in the top five right now. Um, he has really good striking, and he has really good footwork. Um, but. I've watched his fights, you know. He got tired in his last fight against Francis Nagano. All that fancy footwork, you know, him supposedly being the fastest heavyweight that we've ever seen, all that all that went away. One or two takedowns, making him earn, getting back up to his feet, that, that tired him out big time. I'm a wrestler, and uh, I wrestle people a lot, and it's a different type of endurance, you know. A lot of people don't like having someone on top of them and having to earn their way back up to his feet. I watched Francis Nagano in that last fight. Francis, in the last rounds, could barely move his feet. He could barely lift his legs. He was walking so slowly. Um, and Gain didn't destroy Francis. You know what I mean? Um, Francis wins his fights by like first round knockout, second round knockout. Francis outworked Surreal Gain. Surreal's Gain, coach said it himself. Surreal's talented, Francis is a hard worker. Um, I beat Daniel Cormier. Um, I outworked Daniel Cormier. Daniel's slogan is embrace the grind. Daniel Cormier outworked the shit out of Francis. But Francis, the guy who outworked serial gain, it's, it's like, since when did, has Francis become a guy who outworks others? His gift is knockout power. He got worked, outworked by Francis. That tells me a lot. That tells me a lot. Um, I watch that fight all, almost every night, and I just see Francis exhausted, laying on top of Cyril Gain, not even trying to hurt him, just being satisfied being on top. 
and I saw no offense from the from the ground. We all know Syria has nice ankle locks. Our team worked extensively on ankle lock defense, um, reversing them. I just, I just, I just don't see Cyril being able to handle a guy like me. I don't, I just can't see it. I, I respect him. I work very hard. I know I talk confidently, but I respect him so much. And um, like every opponent, I, I give it my all. I just don't see myself losing to a guy like Cyril Game. Not getting outworked by Francis. I, I just can't imagine him outworking me and he couldn't outwork Francis. I just can't see that happening. When you went on your, your, your layoff, you were the number one pound for pound fighter in the world. That conversation has kind of come up a lot between Volkanovski and Islam. And I feel like there's like a generation of fans that's like, hey, wait, like John Jones is fighting in a couple of weeks. Have we forgotten what he's done? Do you think people like there's a generation that just doesn't hasn't seen you fight and maybe they just don't appreciate what you did in the past? Yeah, you know, it's wild. The MMA game is wild. I, uh, I have a young man coming up to me. And, young uh, man. Excuse me, Yao Ming? No, Young Men. <laughs> I'd be like, Ni Hao, Ni Hao Ma. Um, yeah, I have young men coming up to me and they're like, dude, I started watching you when I was 10 years old. You know, today I'm 22 years old. I'm like, I've been around for a long time, dude. I got all these gray hairs in my beard. It's wild. It's wild. Um, I'm honored to still be here. It's great to still be here. Um, I've been inactive over the last three years when it comes to the UFC space. I've been living a total martial arts lifestyle for the very first time in my life, though. You know, In the past, I would really train right before fights. And now I, I have my own team, and they hold me accountable. I have to be there. And so uh, you know, I weight lift four days a week. I train five days a week. Um, I have multiple practices a day. Uh, to get to your question, um, Volkanovski, uh, has been very active, and I do believe that he deserves to be the top fighter in the world. Him and Islam, you know, I, I think Volkanovski kept that title after a loss. Well, he deserves it, man. He, he, he's refreshing. He speaks well. Uh, his country loves him. He represents the sport well. Um, he can't dance. We did. We established that. I asked him <laughs> about being able to dance. It's funny. He's like, yeah, I just shadow box. Anyways, um, I'm fighting to be the greatest fighter ever not to be the pound for pound best right now. Uh, we have two different motivations, and I think there's room for both of us at the top. Um, and final one for me, Bo Nickel was in here. He said you guys had a little bit of a wrestling match. And uh, so how'd that go? It wasn't a wrestling match. Bo is young and ambitious, and, uh, and he's looking for a reason to try to take me down, I'm sure. I'll give him the opportunity if he wants it, but I'm an old man with a lot of tricks. We, uh, we, we shook hands, and I, we kind of got down in a wrestling stance. And I think he was thinking that I was going to let his hand go. And he, he went to try to grab my leg, and I held his hand and just kind of made him do a really awkward motion. And uh, we both looked at each other, and I just said, mm, i got some tricks now. So you didn't walk up to him and say, I bet I could take you down? I did not. I learned my lesson with DC. I learned my lesson. Um, but I'm super excited for Bo Nichols, uh, just American wrestler. He represents that grit, that hard work. And um, I could see him just going in extremely far in this sport. Yeah, he, he, have, he has one of the greatest martial arts down already, which is, I believe is wrestling. Us wrestlers, we get, to, we get to dictate the pace of a fight. You know, things get tough on us, we just take it to the ground. And we can also avoid being taken down. We can get back to our feet when we're in trouble. Uh, and Bo has that down. I think he's going to do awesome. I'm John excited Dan. to get to know him better. John, down here to your left. You touched on your weight training, and you brought in Stan, the Rhino, everything for your weight training. Talk to me about that. How was it training with a former Mr. Olympia bodybuilder? What's up, Governor? Where are you from? Uh, London. London, yeah. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, yeah, so I, I worked out with a guy named Stan Efferdine for a while. They call him White Rhino. He's actually a Las Vegas, uh, Las Vegas native. I worked out with a guy, Matt Wiedemer, who was a, he was a strength and conditioning coach for, I believe, the Browns. The Browns, I believe. Anyways, uh, both of these guys came out to Albuquerque. They lived with me for nine months. They taught me about lifting hard, lifting heavy. They, talked, they, taught, they taught me uh, muscular endurance, which is basically lifting heavy for, for lots of reps. You see guys often, they'll, they'll, 
they'll do whole, you know, the 600 pound deadlift and only be able to lift it once. You know, these guys had me doing things like 500 pounds, you know, for sets of 10, things like that, sets of eight, you know, just really working that muscular endurance. Uh, they taught me the importance of eating. You know, you gotta eat if you wanna gain size. And so just eating rice with eggs in the morning and, and rice for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, six meals a day, three protein shakes a day, the importance of sleeping early, staying hydrated, just really living the lifestyle of, of, a, of an athlete. And I think that's why I come into this event with so much confidence. You know, I know you guys haven't seen me in three years. I don't, very, I don't post very much uh, about my private life or what I, what I do on a day-to-day basis, but my team see me. They see my workout ethic, and, um, and it's really good. I'm really proud of it. I'm, I'm very confident. I, I, I genuinely believe that if you were to put me in some sort of CrossFit event with all the heavyweights in the UFC, I believe I'd come out in first place. There may be guys that can bench a little more than me, guys that maybe can deadlift a little more than me, guys that can squat more than me. But when it comes to running long distance, running fast, lifting big numbers, having muscular endurance, uh, I believe I'm a total package athlete right now. I'm, I'm very, very fit. Like I said, I don't have a six pack right now, which is something I'm used to going into fight week. Uh, but I do not deny my, my physical fitness right now. I feel better than ever. And you touched on the big three you lift there. What were your records, if you could remember, when you were working um, on So I ended off training camp uh, bench pressing 315 for five. Um, deadlifts is about, about 640. And uh, my bench is about 500 pounds, five, maybe 520, somewhere around there. Around there. Uh, towards the end, I wasn't going for big numbers. I was just going for explosiveness and muscular endurance. But I've gotten pretty strong over the last three years. The final question for me, uh, a lot has been made about this new heavyweight frame that you got. What was the peak weight that you reached during the three-year hiatus? Mm, a few months ago, I got up to about 267. 267, but I, I, I felt a little more bloated and I didn't like my endurance at that weight. Um, so uh, I, I plan on competing right around anywhere between 245 and 250 on fight night with some real gain. I don't, I don't think I need to be overly big in this event. I just need to have the engine to carry me through the event. I have the engine. John, right here. Uh, you tweeted out right here. Uh, you tweeted out the other day, I feel officially cleared and there will be no asterisk next to my performances anymore. I, I think I know what you're getting at with that, but for people who are maybe uneducated, can you elaborate? Yeah, so uh, USADA has changed some of the rules um, regarding picogram levels and, and what's allowed. And um, I've come to find out that all my, all my findings were under the new legal limit meaning that I would have been cleared from every uh, test I've ever taken. And, um, and that means a lot to me. Um, I'm grateful to be the athlete who fought the system, who could afford the lawyers and the scientists to prove my innocence. I do believe that I, I, I don't know if it's the word carry the cross or like took the bullet for the rest of all the young athletes, but I was the first to have to go through it. And uh, people considered me a cheater. And um, now, if, if that same rule uh, would have applied back then, uh, it would have never even made the media. It would have never been a deal at all. I, my win over Daniel Cormier would not be a no contest. It would be a knockout, KO, victory. Um, so I'm hoping that with these rule changes, maybe we go back and make that no contest a win. That would mean a lot to me. I have no ill will towards USADA or or anything like that. It was just something that we needed to go through. I was, I was the first one and one of the biggest names to go through it. And uh, I'm glad I did because some of these younger fighters wouldn't have been able to survive something like that. They would have just been cut or, or not been able to afford the lawyers or whatever. Um, so I took the bullet for this sport, for Major League Baseball, and uh, I'm glad that, that fighters in the future get to avoid what I went through. It was, it was hell being considered a steroid cheat. And uh, I'm glad that, that people can see clearly now that I never was. And um, I feel set free. And John you, in the back. You mentioned, uh, just one more. Uh, you mentioned that we don't get to see much of your personal life and stuff like that. But uh, last time you were in Vegas, the Hall of Fame stuff, some of that did spill out into the public. Uh, we haven't heard you really address any of that stuff. Just want to give you the opportunity if there's next, anything you want to next, say about the Next question. Yeah, fair enough. What were you saying, Mayo? Oh, in the back. 
you mentioned that you have a different motivation. And what is that for you now, and that coming into this fight specifically? So my motivation, my motivation, my motivation is to become the best man that I can be, be, be a reflection of God's love and his forgiveness, and ultimately have fans from around the world to see the Christ that's inside of me. Um, we are, none of us are perfect, and um, we all have ups and downs in life, and I genuinely believe, genuinely believe that my imperfection makes me very relatable to a lot of people. And one of my goals is for people to one day see, like if, if, if a person like John could love Jesus Christ, and if a person like John could have uh, a relationship with Jesus Christ, then maybe I can too. And um, I really believe that my platform one day are gonna lead a lot of people to Jesus Christ. I'm excited uh, to get things right eventually. You know, I'm 35 years old and I'm at an age where you can't make many excuses for downfalls and stuff like that, but I am a young man. And uh, I'm looking forward to the man that I'm gonna be one day, when I'm maybe in my 40s. You know, I'm not saying I'm, I won't make mistakes again in the future, but maybe the man that I'm in my 40s or 45, 50 years old, I'm gonna be a man with a lot of experience. I'll be able to be able to talk to young men and tell them you know, things they don't wanna do, roads they don't wanna go down. And um, ultimately, I really do believe that um, a few souls will be saved because of my existence. And that is my motivation, to build a big platform and ultimately find ways to give glory to God. Just a Good. final. John. What's up, man? Uh, there's a theory out there that uh, your last three title fights, you were bored and that you were basically playing with your food. Um, now that time has passed and you're in a, in a new division, was that true? Uh, yeah, it was. It's not that I was bored and playing with my food. It was just that it was, you know, I, I wanted more. I wanted, I wanted greater challenges. You know, th these guys were relatively unknown a lot of these guys, and I really wasn't happy with my pay either. That was a really big thing. And I, I was at a place where I was just like, how can, I, how can I spike the interest of the fans? You know, no one knew Dominic Reyes for the most part. He was a killer, knocking out everyone, undefeated. No one respected him, you know, as good as he was. And we saw how, we saw how good he was competing up, up until fighting me. No one respected him. And I was just stuck in this place of like, you know, how can I get to a certain level as an athlete? Like, you know, you see these guys, Deontay Wilder, and you see all these athletes, you know, who are not absolute legends, you know, like these guys were right around my level, been competing right around the same time, but these guys got these Ferraris and private jets in there, and I'm, and I'm just like, like, how can I get there? You know what I mean? And, and I just started to realize that I needed to bump up. That's what the fans wanted to see the whole time. It's like maybe that's where my, my big money fights are going to be. And um, I just decided to, to make the leap. I feel like heavyweights, uh, our division, is a lot of guys in their mid-30s, early 30s. And um, I just felt like the weight cuts were getting a little bit tougher. And I just felt I was at an age where I was just ready to eat more and lift more and be a big boy. And so no time like the present. We're here now. And that uh, the uh, light heavyweight division has been kind of been disarray since you left that division. Um, did you kind of foresee that coming? Like the, the, that that up on that that title was going to change hands a lot. It's it's what happened before I became the champion. You know, Leon Machida had the belt. Rashad Evans had the belt. Rampage had the belt. Um, Boris had the belt. Uh, I mean, it just kept getting passed around. Then I came along and I was able to hold it down for a very long time. And then I leave the division, and now it's getting passed around again. It just shows how competitive these guys are. And it, it, humbly, it, it shows how special my, my reign was to be able to hold that down for so long. And it's a very special thing. I don't take any of it for granted. John, just down here. Yeah. It's been uh, three years since you fought, and also three years since Conor McGregor had a win. He's back this year. How do you see Conor coming back against Michael Chandler? There's only one Conor McGregor. I love Connor. I, I, I love, I love what he represents, man. He's he's big. He's big. He has a gigantic brand. In some sense is just as big as our sport, you know. And uh, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be great when he comes back. He's gonna bring a, a whole new energy, even more fans. It's great for all of us. It's great for the sponsors. 
Um, it's great for the UFC. I wish Conor all the best. I, I, love, I love the way he's living his life. I never thought in, in my time I'd see an MMA fighter with a, a Ferrari yacht. <laughs> right? <laughs> but he's done it. Lamborghini. Lamborghini <laughs> yacht. See, you guys know. Um, and I'm so proud of him. It, it, it opens doors. Um, for all of us, it lets young fighters know that it's possible. You know, there's there's great business outside of the sport. There's life-changing opportunity outside of the sport, and I'm just so grateful for for, for uh, being that example for all of us. And just finally, I know you were commenting a lot of a lot of Alex Pereira's posts before he won the title. He's gonna rematch Izzy again, fourth time they fought. How do you see that second fight going in MMA between them? I, I believe uh, Pereira's gonna win again. You know, there's some athletes that just have other athletes' number. And um, I see he works hard, and um, I'm rooting for him. And I believe he's going to do it again. Thanks, John. Thank you, guys. Guys, thank you so much for your time. God bless you all. Make sure you're watching UFC 285 this Saturday night only on pay-per-view.